Hey, what's up guys? It's Rick with the Digital Divide, and today we're going to be doing another character spotlight. This is a series where I go over lesser known or obscure characters in the uh, comic book world. And this week I'm going to focus on Mantis. You may think you know her from the Guardians of the Galaxy, but that is not the Mantis that was originally created in the comics. Up until she appeared in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, very few people had ever even heard of Mantis. And that's because her character really never took off the way Marvel intended it to. The character of Mantis was created by Steve Englehart. He was the writer, and the original artist on that run was Don Heck, who is unfortunately no longer with us. Mantis's first appearance was in Avengers number 112, which came out in 1973. This is one of those unfortunate first appearances where she's not on the cover and her name's not even mentioned on the cover. Uh, she does get her first proper cover, though, in Avengers number 114, where she is prominently displayed next to the swordsman. In the comic books, Mantis is a master of meditational disciplines, giving her an unusual amount of control over her body, including the ability to control her heartbeat, bleeding, and even breathing as well as her pain sensors, allowing her to quickly heal injuries through sheer force of will. She also has superhuman reflexes and reactions. She is a master martial artist, and she has psychic empathy, a telepathic power that allows her to sense the emotions of others. And this is the power set that they really focused on in the Marvel movies and didn't really emphasize a lot of her other attributes. The comic book version of Mantis is a badass. She is a really, really excellent fighter. She's very arrogant, confident, and assertive, which is the complete opposite of how she is portrayed in the MCU. In the MCU, she's very passive and quiet and humble, which is the complete opposite of how she's supposed to be. Steve Englehart, who was the creator, had some things to say about that. The only, the only relationship between the mantis on screen and the mantis in the comics is that they're both female they have right. no other overlapping concept she had, you know my mantis had a speech a way of speaking she had a color she had a, you know a look all these different things all that got jettisoned um so i you know i've said and i you know it's like thank you for putting mantis in there i wish it were you know a little, a little closer different. to the to the to the original so mantis has been a member of the avengers a member of the guardians of the galaxy she's interacted with pretty much every a-list marvel character you can think of including black panther and doctor strange amongst uh, others but she has a really interesting past and in fact one point she was kind of kidnapped by kang the conqueror and forced to be his bride and he used to call her the celestial madonna and he wanted to harness her powers um, this storyline did not age well over the years um, because it was forced and not consensual. Uh, so much so to the point where Marvel has, has gone back and retconned this whole storyline. There is a really cool article on CBR.com that you can read that kind of goes over the history of this and how it happened and, and why Marvel decided to, to pull it. Uh, I think that's obvious. Who are you? How did you get down here? We are here to free the Star-Lord. I believe you will give me the key and leave us. How did you do that? Still you doubt the power of belief. So ever since Guardians of the Galaxy came out, people know who Mantis is. She's in cartoons now, she's in modern comic books. That kind of goes for the whole cast, because as a whole, Guardians of the Galaxy were not really known all that well, but Mantis in particular was probably the least known of all of the team. When Marvel was making preparations to bring Guardians of the Galaxy into the MCU, they reached out to Steve and asked him if he had any interest in bringing back the character of Mantis and doing another run to kind of reinvigorate her so people would know who she is beforehand, but that didn't turn out so well because they wanted more creative control than he was willing to give up, and he kind of goes over the, a bit of that here. And then in like 2000, Marvel came calling again and said, you know, we'd like you to, you know, basically they said, Mantis has been completely fucked up and we want you to come back and do a Mantis series. The industry by that time had really changed, it really become very Hollywoodized. And it was, you know, having gone from like, here's the Avengers, do whatever you want to do, to you could pitch us something that you'd like to do and 
tell us what you're going to do in the first 12 issues, and then we'll we'll get back to you as to whether you know, and we'll send you notes. And it was very, you know, I just said. Ah. So that's going to do it for me today, guys. Although I did want to leave you with one fun fact. Steve Englehart not only created Mantis, but he also wrote for the Avengers, the Defenders, Doctor Strange, Batman. Uh, but more importantly, he was credited for saving the Captain America comic book franchise. Marvel was ready to cancel the Captain America comic book series because it wasn't doing so well during the Vietnam War, and he was tasked with saving uh, the comic book franchise, and if he hadn't, we probably wouldn't have him today as a character. Let's talk about that, because some of the major characters that you have been involved with have made the transition to film. So yeah. let's talk about Captain America. I mean, my favorite Captain America movie is Winter Soldier. I right, think it's just too. brilliant. But um, they've all been, I mean, starting then, all Marvel movies got to be pretty good. Um, well, with Captain America, when they gave me Captain America way back in the beginning, it was a failing book because it was Vietnam War time in America. A large part of your potential audience was living with the idea that they might get called up and sent to Southeast Asia to get killed. So they weren't really, and they were billing Captain America as the living legend of World War II. You know, he stood for America in the war. It's like that, you couldn't sell that. And so they, you know, the book was not doing well, so they gave it to the new guy, and they said, see if you can figure something out, because if you can't, we're either going to cancel it altogether, or at least we'll make it bi-monthly. And I went home that night, and, and the idea I came up with was to make him stand for American ideals, the stuff that you hear about that doesn't always show up in practice, but you know, the stuff that you hear about. Um, and that not only worked for that book then and there, but it became the default Captain yeah. America after that. That's the guy that's on screen now, right? That's what everybody- All right, guys, that's it for me today. As always, thank you for watching.